Yeah. And with that being said, uh, let's get here to Grand Finals. Marvelous Marco coming out from the loser's side. Of course, Great Clash staying all the way through winners. Like I said, man, if Marco's going to put all the experience he's learned against Cairo and, and Great Clash yeah. from the winner's side, man, he's going to put it all together, man. Like I said, it's like it's like you feel at this point, you got to think of it like this. You and so class, far, Jesus, he's going at it. Yeah, 74%. <laughs> it's like I'm telling you, for a look, he took a class, he this failed. You're to death? Oh, this could be it. 100%. No forward air. Great play, but, confirm? but good up smash to kind of cover Bayo's landing there. What Great a class is not able yeah. to get in. Good lord. I'm telling look, look, bro. Marco failed the class. And then he said, you know what, next semester, I'm gonna sign up for the class that I failed, and I'm gonna try to pass it, because now I learned all the things that I failed for the first time. This is what's going Third. on right now. Big ol' zero to death to start things off here. Finally, Great Class starting to get some offense, and Perry from Marco trying to get the um Uppy to work, but unfortunately just not Oh, okay. Okay. That was interesting. Well, the Great Clash is still going to try to fight through it, despite SDing there, unfortunately. It must have been like, you know, just native input lag probably eating the up B that Great Clash was looking for. Yeah. Marco doing an excellent job just holding the lead. 40% Great Clash for 85. This is going to be an up air. Great afterburner kick trying to immediately extend this witch time, but no play just yet. That said, Great Clash does ultimately have at least two games to burn. Right, yeah. which would be on the inner side, so. Oh, where was the DI on yeah. that one? Jeez. I don't think that should have killed. <laughs> Especially on PS2, jeez. Yeah, that was, that was the I give up, let me get the next game run back DI. Like, yeah. I respect it. Sometimes, folks, you just kind of have to take an L in order to like reset yourself mentally Correct. and be like, okay, okay, let's, <laughs> that was just a thing. Here comes the real game. Yeah, and honestly, it's more for mental fortitude, right? Like, if you're yeah. not feeling great the first game, it's okay to toss it out. And in this case, since you're Great Clash, you're staying on winner's side, so you can toss out the first game and even try to go to the reset to make a full adaption of Marco. That's the beauty about staying on winner's side. You have much more open space to adapt. All right, well, game two, Marvelous Marco starting off really with the, I'm honestly with the hot hands coming out from the loser side. Let's see if he gets the rematch here against Great Clash. Interesting back and forth so far. Listen, Marco is starting to get a bit more of the momentum going, but here comes Great Clash to shut that down. Taking Marco up to the skies. I was about to immediately hit the Rashido button. Man, because he was flying up the shirt. Woo! Again, Marco with these Houdini evasion to the big old bay of fists. Yeah, you gotta watch that one to the skies. Now you can just have Marco holding excellent DI, knowing how to just survive against Bayonetta, but there's the witch time and the roll from Marco to nearly get away from the ledge. Marco's got some time here, 131 and 66. Looking for some plays with the boomerang, but immediately the aggression from uh -oh. Great Clash sensing the landing before Marco gets a chance. Oh, that was an interesting witch time. But didn't affect Marco too much. Great Clash trying to get that heavy landing. Marco was able to shield through it. And, uh, uh, okay, another SD. I uh, wild to see this in Grand Finals. Yeah, pretty wild to see it in Grand Finals. Unless Great Clash will tie things up and start to with that forward smash. Pretty it's good just stuff. Like in, yeah, just like in Game Two, Great Clash able to big time punish a whiff on that B. A nice sliding heel kick there. Forcing Marco off stage, but he's able to fight his way back. Excellent cross up. A little bit of scary cross up there, just because if you look at the consideration of how great Clash went, right? It is good for go to after yeah. burner kick back air on the cross up, but the problem is you're putting yourself into disadvantage. So great Clash has got to be a little bit careful on how he wants to poke through on Marco's shield. They are still even stocks, percent not separating them too much. Yeah, did you see that Marco's. Marco is really successful using uh, Boomerang to make Great Clash think twice about going up high. Yeah. So you can see how grounded he's playing. 
Because you can still go for, if you pretty much quarter circle input your afterburner kick, you can still go for the downwards one, and then you can lead that into some combos there, or just poke through onto Toon Link and then go from there and take the stage. So stopping, effectively for Marco, his game plan is to stop Bayonetta and her movement to give him the opportunities oh. he would rather have against Bayonetta. Because if you effectively move for the things that she favors, like heel slide, oh, you're taking away that was powerful tool. That was great class just being stuck in like get up for so long. The marker yeah. was able to get out of hit stun and up oh. air him beforehand. Whoa! Avoid that bit up smash! Marco! He's like, who's out here? This guy's. <laughs> great Clash is not having a good time. But, no. like, I still. Oh. I still have to come in Great Clash because he's looking to wait for ways to get around Marco. Like the reason why he goes for the downer there is given Marco's positioning, he's gonna call a roll or call a possible like just trying to go back and punish. And that downer, of course, if you're not ready for it, it's a lot of knockback on damage there too as well. So good use of that jump, able to try to poke through Marco, but no confirm here. Once again, like you said, bro, he's got that boomerang out to stop Great Clash in yeah. his tracks. Oh what? Snipes! Snipes! Oh, no. Snipe after snipe! Oh, but Great Clash don't covers! Great Clash is like, oh, all that for a drop of blood. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a pretty big drop of blood, man. Great Clash on one thing. Oh, that's did do that stock, it. though. Yeah. Finally gets a little bit of a break here one, after 138, but man, things are looking tough here as Marco definitely putting all the knowledge he has learned from Winterside. Marco's got to be careful, though, because Great Clash can figure out some way to get a good gimp, but that doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> and, if, and, if you, and if you look at it, too, at worst, when Bayonetta goes for a roll get up, that boomerang will be there to catch Bayonetta, and that'll still give Marco enough time of the day to just move away afterwards yeah. from a potential punish. It's so, be so stuff. It's so frustrating. I, I, I feel like I, I get like this like secondhand like understanding of probably the frustration there for Great Clash in terms of Marco staying so grounded yet being able to control the airspace with all of his um, projectiles for the most part. Like as a character, you know, I, I mean, Cinderor, I want to take to the sky because my aerials are so much better than my ground game for the most part. Yeah. To be denied over and over. I mean, we might hurts. see Gray Clash. We might see Gray Clash have to like adjust and try to go for more heel slides because taking to the sky really is a almost like an inherent meta adjustment to the fact that everybody's looking out for heel slide as like the primary the primary bayonetta approach. Like against Grand Jets dash attack against bayonetta, it's heel slide. So we might see more of that. Yeah. Of course, Marco definitely on the chance for the reset. Of course, as we mentioned, it's best of three all the way through. Even in grants, such is the story here on these ladders. But they're provided for you guys for ways to improve while still giving you a bracket as well to, you know, get a chance to improve. And, of course, earn some cash prizes courtesy of the good folks at Smash EG. And, of course, if you're watching here on any clip, definitely check out MetaView. Download it on the iOS app now. iOS, honestly, I have an iPhone, you have an iPhone, maybe your grandma has an iPhone. Get that MetaView app, man, and get your Smash clips on the go or at home here. Just like Great Clash, working on an excellent clip here, 89% on the Marco, making game one look like a fluke a little bit here. Yeah, it's Great Clash being like, all right, now it's my time to style on you, Marco. Big oh. F smash, that's good. Oh, Marco survived. You're on town, that's, that's yeah. wild. Town City, of course, having some of the bigger blast zones. That was kind of the interesting thing coming the out. Bigger, the bigger upper blast zone, not the bigger right, side right, blast right. zone. <laughs> well, that's, that's the crazy thing, Fro, too, is if you think about Smash 4, the blast zones on town are relatively small. So they kind of nerfed that in Ultimate, and then they made the blast zones bigger in terms of height. Oh, good grab here? Yeah. I'm surprised Marco was able to get away with air dodging to stage right there beforehand. But big grab whiff from Great Flash. Well, if you look at Marco, the way he's throwing out his projectiles, it's really smart here because he throws bomb towards the ground so that if Great Clash tries to go for a landing on the stage, he's got to evaluate the bomb, potentially hitting yep. him, and giving Marco a follow-up. And the longer he stays on that platform or goes for an aerial, he's got to worry about boomerang giving Marco the time of the day. So that's what I'm saying about Mar Marco's master plan. You see, every projectile is thrown with a purpose here, but Great Clash with the first stock, like I said. I know. Master plans are master plans, but they don't amount to much if uh, Great Clash is able to weave in through those options and manage to finally land the, the two hits they need to take that stock. Yeah, most and definitely. Great Clash isn't, isn't stopping there either. Yeah, well, anyway, he doesn't want to give Marco a reset. He said, you know what? You failed the class the first time. Uh, what makes you going to pass it this time around? But Marco getting the first point definitely shows signs of hope here. And, of course, Great Clash able to break through with Afterburner Kick. Big grab from Marco.
but he still can't find the confirm. Well, man, there he goes. He just he just found the confirm. He needed to take that first stock. Let's go. Yeah, yeah the, uh, <laughs> is really good for all the links just because of how long it lasts and the amount of knockback yep. that it does. So it, it in I believe in four it was better at beating spot dodges and air dodges if you depending on how you use it, and in definitely in ultimate it's more so the case. I was that one of the things that can make landing so difficult in this game for everybody is when the camera moves with your characters in the air and kind of oh, zooms in. Preach, preach. Oh, oh no, the no. stage. Yeah, the stage. I'm gonna blow up in time. Nope, I have to do it. Yeah, and if it blows up in Marco's hands, it's only gonna give him another spin attack. But fro, preach because fighting Duck Hunt Dog is my worst nightmare, <laughs> man. Seeing that can move my whole camera away hurts well, my it, eyes. It's not. It's not just like the, the camera moving away in that. It's specific to. Or it's it's more general. It's like every kind of interaction where you're up in the air and the spyglass moves in so closely that you can't see the ground. Yeah. Like, like all of, if Grace Lash didn't do that that juggle up further, we would have seen it. I said, even ball game right now, stock wise. Mm -hmm. Marco trying to find his way in, trying to deal with uh, great, great clash, feeling a lot more emboldened to take to the take to the skies and yeah. than he did in the first two games. And you can see it too, like you said, emboldened to take into the skies gets the opto all the way here. This is an uh -oh. excellent start for great clash to get a little bit of a lead back at a stop Marco and shut him down here. But great from Marco's play. All oh, the witch have to do it. No, oh no! Yeah. That hike for Town and City is such a blessing for Marco at this very point in time. Yeah. Oh, oh I was going to say, watch this on Great Clash. Yeah, because Marco can look for an opportunity to follow that up. Marco effectively clipping all of Bayonetta's wings, like I said. Marco throws out every projectile with purpose there, and it's up to Great Clash to see if he can find a break through this wall here. But what a call out on the oh, air dodge. Man. Great Clash saying, you know what, man? Like I said, you may have lost the first. The you failed the class the first time. We'll make sure so sure you can pass the second time here and i'm gonna put this to game three marco with one more opportunity man what a call off of great clash just breaking through oh. every projectile i think we're in the reset aren't we that was no. game one of the reset does a grand wasn't grand's first round two out of marco that was the third game we've seen oh my god it's okay. Like I'm so used to Grands being best of five that I thought so too. Same. Like that. That just. Uh, <laughs> that just. That just. Uh, that. You know what? It's you know, okay, this, man. This is why I'm happy you're here, man. So I think it's right now just currently one out of Great Clash. Yeah. That's all good. Game two, Marco had to take a deep breath trying to reset things, whereas Grey Clash is like, I am tired of dealing with this small child throwing so many projectiles my way, not letting me dance all over him. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you know what, Link? I know it's your anniversary, 35 years, man, but where's right. my Bayo 3? Come on. <laughs> where's my Bayo 3? Where's my sequel, young child? <laughs> man, this child gets away with too much. Oh. So I guess shielding through witch time actually like reduces its timing, huh? Interesting. Yeah. Uh, also, oh, oh big clash! Great clash might still survive this. Yep, got yeah, the height. What a, what a play with holding the up oh. too as well, but that's a great call. Not that Marco. second one. Yeah. yeah. Ports also good for definitely getting out potential get up on the ledge as well. What a play! Oh, uh, big like witch time. You can see the increase in witch time usage by Grey Clash the longer these sets go, because he's starting to get more familiar with what options are actually punishable that Marco is trying to deploy. Right, and even even though if you keep using witch time, the slowdown doesn't last as long as it first does, but it's still worthy of going towards because you get to avoid unnecessary damage out of the way. And Grey Clash is feeling emboldened to get that giant up smash call out there on Marco's landing again, punishing the Toon Link oh. main. What a play from Great Clash using Afterburner Kick to immediately get him with Fair One. Yeah. It's gonna be a good heel slide. What a play too, because if you go for the full heel slide, you can easily Marco. confirm it. <laughs> Marco just like relaxing, just taking all the hits. <laughs> no need to panic. It's good too. Yeah, like your best bet is to try to SDI immediately as soon as possible. But oh, also man. don't panic, because if you get your jumped red and you might fall into another area where you just not gonna escape. Yeah, you can see Grey Clash is so much more comfortable with the grounded options than like during the uh, initial set of grand finals. Yeah. So many heal slides, so many dash attacks. Again, Marco forced to air dodge again. And 
like all great class needs to catch one of those. Let's go do it for the stock. That back air is going to do it too. We have not seen the killing back air that much. And there we go. Great clash. One stock away, one possible witch twist away from closing it out here and taking the fourth ladder event. Yeah, Marco may have gotten the reset hero, but you got to finish. You got to finish your food, Marco. And unfortunately, Great Clash is making that very difficult. Adaptation, that's the beauty of having to stay on winner side. You have a whole yeah. extra set to adapt to your opponent's game plans. I look at Great Clash just playing so defensively, trying to make, trying to force Marco into making a big mistake that'll cost him this last stock. Oh, the re grab and bomb. Oh, no, but Great Clash is able to survive with that back air in. Looking for the up tilt for the kill. Back throw. Great Clash. Oh, man, Marco staying so desperate with those down airs. Yeah, and that was going to Great Clash to actually stall the way that he came back on the stage with Afterburner Kick because he had changed it up. Marco had set up for the right off opportunity on the Afterburner Kick, but this time Great Clash changed it for the downward. Bomb. Oh, this might be it for Marco. Off oh. air back air. Yeah, up tilt back air. Not oh, enough. still alive. Marco getting back to ledge. Zare coming through for him. Oh, no, Marco. Up getting called out. Great Clash. I was going to Great Clash. Yeah, yeah. This, this he's... Oh! Like, it's curtains, man. It's Stylish curtains. finish. Stylish it's finish with the heels. I was going to say, it's curtains, man. The minute I saw Great Clash grab the ledge and then get that witch twist, I was like, yeah, yeah it's done. It's curtains. He can either go for back air or he can read the spin attack on the air and then just go for down air. There are so many tools she has when she's got the ledge over at Toon Link. And that's going to be all she wrote. Great Clash, ladies and gentlemen, is your winner of the Day 4 Smash GG Ladder.